I would love to tell you that it, we have a really militant unions and they were really revved up and everything was like, but no. We hadn't had a raise in 20 or so years, which made us 48 in the nation. So then they start trying to mess with our insurance on top of the pay being so low, and then that's kind of what sparked it all. We get a paper in the mail that says, you know, you have to go to a doctor by such and such date. It must be reported. Your blood glucose levels must be uh, at a certain amount. Your waist size must be a certain amount. And if it is not, and you don't meet all these stipulations, then you get a $500 penalty on your out-of-pocket deductible. Then the PEIA board, which is our public employee insurance agency, say we're raising your premiums. You're going to now be enrolled in a program called Go 365, which means that you have to wear a Fitbit and you have to record all of your steps. It included private questions like how much sexual activity do you perform? In a week, is it vigorous? Uh, all of these things. And if we refuse to wear that Fitbit, record all of our steps, or if we didn't make our steps, we were going to be charged an additional $25 per month. They also introduced a bill to eliminate seniority. It was up to the superintendent, the principal, whether or not you got to stay in your position. Regardless if you were there 30 years or there for your first or your second year. They were saying what we're going to do is we are going to take spouse's income as well as your income and we're going to combine them and that's what we're going to base your premiums and out-of-pocket deductibles from. So that took people from a lower bracket into a higher bracket. So people were having to pay double a month what they were paying, sometimes triple a month what they were paying. We started organizing actions. Uh, we would show up to any events where there were uh, legislators. This senator said, your health care is not a priority, basically. And that inflamed everyone across all 55 counties who were in the Facebook group. And we said, here's his email address. And so then he would get... <laughs> And then people started posting screenshots of those emails like the, and the responses that they would get from that senator. And then they would say, wait, I'm gonna call, I'm gonna email my senator. Like, how do I even know who my senator is? And so we started posting links to the, uh, you know, the website, uh, the state website where you can find your senator. Our county was the first to vote to go out. <laughs> was not our idea. Our neighboring county of Wyoming came to me and said, you know, we're talking about a sick out, a flu out, what be it. But she said, we're going to have this event that we're going to name Fed Up Friday where we're just not going to show up. <laughs> and so she told me this like a week and a half in advance. And she says, we're going to vote on it soon. So I immediately called a, an emergency meeting for all of our people to come to, and I invited our Senator Ojeda, and as well as a couple local board members. We had our local union leaders there. We were being encouraged to sit back a while because it wasn't close enough to the end of the session. They were afraid if we got started early, we went out on strike, then we would end up being out for two, three, four weeks with no pay. So they wanted us to send emails, but my people wouldn't have it. I said, you know what? I represent you. What you tell me to do is what we will do in this county. Do we participate in Fed Up Friday? Do we have a motion? And they all stand up and everybody's hands go up and I say, okay. Fed Up Friday it is. So we have WBEA members, AFT members, WVSSPA members, which is our service personnel organization, and a lot of non-members. So we decided that everyone should have a voice. And our organizations don't work together because they're competing for members. So we started talking to each other and said, if they try to punish one person, 
we are all together. They're not going to do a damn thing. Our governor called for a 1% raise for public employees. People were so angry. I think if the governor had not called for a 1% raise, we maybe would have never gone on strike. Because we weren't really seeing anything from the unions at that point, people started making uh, their own decisions about what to do within the schools and on Facebook, and those two things were kind of working together, right? I think we did the walk-ins first, right? A walk-in is where you have teachers, staff, support personnel all outside the school like 20 or 30 minutes before school started. As parents were dropping kids off, passing out literature and talking about what was about to happen along the lines of support your teachers, we're here for you, we're here for the community, but we need your support. So the walk-in was sort of a preliminary to the possibility of a rolling walkout. The idea for a rolling walkout was initially to have five counties go out so that you could have each of these different counties sending representatives to the state capitol every single day and you wouldn't have any one county being exhausted from the travel and we were also afraid that the state attorney general would give us an injunction on the strikes so we felt that this was a way to beat the injunction if you have five counties going out on one day as soon as they file on the injunctions where you're back in school then another five counties go 28 years before this strike there was another statewide strike and the veteran teachers at the school said if you guys go on rolling walkouts you're not going to get everything you want because what are five counties going to do it's an inconvenience for a day for that county okay they can absorb that. It has to be every single county. Each county has its own school board and superintendent. And I think that the superintendents and the principals and even the state superintendent realized that our issues are their issues. And they wanted to stand behind us. So we had a meeting locally before we went out and our superintendent came and she in a roundabout way said I'm not going to be filing any injunctions and so I think having that communication with our school board and having the understanding that you know they're just as screwed as we are and especially if they make us angry and we don't do our job or do what we need to do so that was one way that those injunctions were completely wiped off the table weren't even a concern anymore was that communication with our school boards from the very beginning when we talked with our legislators we said you are devastating these communities and when we if we have to take action we're taking action because of the inefficiencies of what you've done so I actually had the privilege of organizing a food drive for our county. Now our county has something like 20% of students on free and reduced lunches and the outpouring of community support just overwhelmed us. We had something like 500 bags of uh, for breakfast and lunches that we then took to the County Board of Education to donate and then distribute from a central location. There was a moment at which the presidents of the two statewide unions had been in negotiations with the governor and came out. So the strike at this point, they'd been out Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, the end of the day, Tuesday. The presidents come out on the steps of the Capitol and say, good news, we've got an agreement and you're all going back to work tomorrow. What happened next? When they come out and declare it's over, you know, 5% raise, um, we'll have, and this is probably where they messed up, we'll have a PEIA task force to look at it. It was just kind of an awe hearing everybody saying, back to the table, we are the union bosses. The governor has the audacity to look at us and say, don't be dumb bunnies, trust me. Okay, so, we have people showing up on the steps in bunny costumes. <laughs> and it was insult after insult. By the way, they said Wednesday's a cooling off day, go back to school on Thursday. So Wednesday, we're all at the Capitol again. Um, but the cool thing was, county by county, you just saw people calling meetings saying, we can't trust them, they haven't signed this bill. There's no way, at the Capitol that morning, people in the House of Delegates were saying, we haven't even seen the bill. We'd love to sign and support you, but it hasn't even come to us yet. We said, you know, we're not going back until the bill is signed by both houses, by the governor, and until we see this task force thing in writing and know that it's real. And I think that was kind of copied statewide. We all decided to wildcat. And someone had like brought up like this little like geography test map. They had taken, they had, like put it on Facebook. 
And as the counties started closing down, they started coloring them in. And I don't remember something as exciting as sitting there watching and like continually updating to see, oh my God, there's five left. Oh, there's four left. And like we were all like that. And then um, one of the chants that people um, said at the Capitol is it was like, not one, not two, not three, not four, but 55 are at your door. And I could like, I could hear it. I could hear it going on. We had a plan in place for real picket lines, which meant that we would have to be there at 4 a.m. when the earliest cooks would get there. And we would have to be there like the entire day and somebody would have to pick at the bus garages. And um, that luckily did not happen, but we were, I was a nervous wreck that Wednesday, waiting the entire day, like, are we going to have a real picket line tomorrow? And the service personnel were incredible. Like, I'm convinced they're the reason that we didn't have real picket lines the next day or really, like, any day of the strike. Our superintendents were great, uh, and they should uh, get recognition for this, but uh, one of the reasons maybe they were as supportive as they were and they, school, uh, they closed schools as quickly as they did is that they kept getting calls from the president of the West Virginia School Service personnel, like those county uh, presidents saying, the buses will not run tomorrow. <laughs> Ultimately, we were able to get a 5% raise for all public employees because this started as a fight for PEIA, which covers all public employees. We said, you know, we're fighting for PEIA, why don't we open this up to all public employees? This should be a fight for all public employees. The national media narrative is uh, very much that we won and it's finished in West Virginia, uh, but that's not true at all. We did not get our central demand met, which was uh, for funding for our health care. Um, so we are very much uh, engaged in a fight right now for, uh, around the PEIA task force. Uh, the governor appointed 29 members to that task force. We have a, a few friendly faces on it, so our union presidents are on it. We have one teacher on the task force, a reti retired teacher. Uh, yeah, there are no service, the, the president of the service personnel union is on it, but there are no actual service personnel. Um, <laughs> but uh, there are multiple uh, Republican uh, legislators, and there are multiple insurance CEOs. Wow. Right? Um, yeah, who have openly talked about their plans to privatize our insurance. Um, yeah, so our next steps are to fight that. Uh, yeah, and and to wage a campaign, a targeted campaign for funding for PEIA through uh, progressive revenue for we, let's reverse those tax breaks uh, to corporations.